Hey guys, Zach here from ZH Fabrications. I thought I would do a video covering uh, solvents, thinners, and uh, chemicals. Uh, I know when I started out, this was kind of one of the most confusing aspects for me, trying to figure out uh, what I should use when, you know, if I'm working with metal, uh, if I'm working with wood, what thinners or solvents to use, if I'm using shellac or some sort of varnish or water-based. I'm gonna go through and explain essentially why I have these and what I use them for. Uh, one of the first things I want to do though is explain the, or show you the difference between a solvent and a thinner. This is some dried shellac here. Uh, hopefully you can see that in there. They actually sell it in flakes but I don't have any so this is actually just dried shellac. Um, this is water. So water is not a solvent for shellac. So Hopefully you can see that absolutely nothing is happening there. I'm going to pour it out and it's still there in the bottom of the cup. Uh, nothing happened. However, alcohol is a solvent for shellac. So if I pour this in there, it's actually going to start assimilating the shellac now I'm going to pour this into here. And you can see it didn't get all of it. There's still a little bit in the bottom, but it got probably 60 to 70 percent. If you let it sit there, and you can even see in the water it's changed the color of it. Um, so, uh, so right now the water is actually acting as a, a thinner for the salt for the uh, shellac. Not that you would ever want to do that. Um, but, so yeah, technically, I mean, when you use, when you dissolve shellac flakes, uh, you dissolve it in denatured alcohol, the, the alcohol acts as a solvent and a thinner for it. So, um, as you can see, when I put just the water in there, it, it had no solvency with the shellac. So, it, you could let it sit there as long as you want, and it's not going to do much at all. So, that's the difference between a solvent and a thinner. All right, so one of the best explanations I've, I've seen is uh, Bob Flexner wrote an article kind of help you differentiate, you know, the differences between all of these products. And one of the really simple ways to look at it, actually, first of all, I'm going to set the boiled linseed oil aside. Um, it's usually thought of as more of a finish than a thinner, so, but it technically is, can be a thinner for oil-based products. Um, if you think about it as uh, essentially you have your petroleum based products, you can include turpentine. It's, technically turpentine isn't a uh, petroleum distillate, it's actually distilled from the pine tree resins, but it kind of works the same as uh, the petroleum products. Uh, and then you have everything else over here, uh, acetone, denatured alcohol. There's also uh, MEK which is methyl ethyl ketone. I don't use it, I haven't really found a a, a need for it so that's one that would be here and also over here uh, toluene is another another one that would technically be in this pile uh, you can buy that as well I don't have a use for it um, they're both actually what constitute this is odorless mineral spirits because the xylene and the toluene have been removed from it they're kind of derivatives of the uh, mineral spirits so I'm just going to go down the list. I made a little reference manual here. I'm going to make this available for download for free on my, my website, zhfabrications.com. So you can, you can uh, download it or print it out, use it as a reference, whatever. Um, I'm just going to go down the list alphabetically and kind of, like I said earlier, I'm going to explain uh, you know, why I have these, a little bit about them, what they're used for. First on my list is acetone. I probably use this more than anything else because uh, I do a fair amount of work with metal. So acetone is fast drying and it's non-oily. Uh, it's an excellent cleaner and degreaser. It's uh, one of the strongest and fastest evaporating solvents out there, which makes it perfect for if you need to clean anything and not leave a residue behind. Uh, this is the last thing I wipe down raw metal with before I apply a finish. If I'm whether it's a primer or a uh, patina, uh, any sort of finish at all. If it's raw metal, before I touch it, I wipe it down with acetone. 
This is my go-to metal pre-finishing cleaner. That's really strong cleaner and degreaser. Uh, also really good at removing sticker and adhesive residue, uh, contact cement. Uh, can dissolve super glue and epoxies before they harden. So if, uh, not that you have much time, but if you have any of this around handy before the super glue dries up on you, this is what you're going to want to use. Also used to remove resinous oils in uh, oily wood. So if you were with like teak or rosewood, anything that has oily resinous funk in it, this is what you're going to want to wipe it down with. Also bonds with water or mineral oil. So if you have, if you're cleaning out, especially your HVLP or spray gun, uh, and you want to get everything out, this is a this is a pretty good way to do that. I usually use uh, denatured alcohol because it kind of does the same thing. Acetone's also a solvent for uh, polyvinyl C, whatever PVC stands for. If you've ever tried painting PVC before, you'll know it doesn't work. If you wipe it down a few times with this, uh, it'll usually etch the surface enough to where you might be able to get the paint to stick. I've, I've used it successfully a few times for that. Um, if you're bored, put a few drops of this stuff on a styrofoam cup and watch what it does. So it uh, it definitely does have some solvent qualities on uh, plastic and PVC. Uh, also used for thinning fiberglass resin. I don't really work with fiberglass at this point, so I've never done that. Uh, denatured alcohol. This is also one of my most commonly used products. Um, it's actually composed of ethyl alcohol, which is the same stuff that is in uh, beer and liquor. Uh, however, they add poisonous stuff to it so that uh, so that we don't have to pay a liquor tax. Um, this is also fast drying and leaves minimal residue behind. Uh, this is the, uh, as you saw earlier, this is the solvent and thinner for shellac. So if you're working with shellac, you're definitely going to, want to have some of this on hand. Also good at removing ink, uh, especially felt tip pens. They're usually alcohol based, so this will usually wipe off any marks or anything you have on there. Also, this is really good if you get done sanding a, whatever you're working on, a tabletop or whatever. Uh, it's good to wipe it down with this stuff. It helps kind of get rid of all that uh, sanding dust and residue. It evaporates really quickly. Uh, this is also a fairly strong cleaner and degreaser, uh, very good window cleaner because it dries fast enough not to leave streaks. I probably use this to clean my HVLP gun more than anything else. So, um, Next on the list is that uh, boiled linseed oil. Like I said earlier, this is more typically thought of as a finish than a, uh, a solvent or a thinner. It's made from flaxseed, it is an oil, uh, boiled linseed oil is pretty well known for its ability to pop the grain or kind of create a, help the figure jump out of the wood, uh, creates kind of a nice contrast. It can be used in a, as a thinner in oil based stains and paints and it still kind of retains that quality so I just thought I would include it in here because uh, you, you can use it as kind of a, a thinner with uh, oil based stains. Uh, next on the list I have lacquer thinner. So this is a solvent and a thinner. So lacquer thinner is kind of a cocktail of a lot of different other solvents and uh, nasty chemicals. This is the general solvent for all types of lacquer. So this is a very very strong brush and spray gun cleaner with a uh, pretty fast evaporation. This is something that you might want to use if all else fails. Like say you're trying to resurrect a dried out brush. Um, if you can't get it with whatever the typical product for what product you were using is, lacquer thinner is pretty strong stuff so it uh, might be able to revive it. The next one on the list that I don't have, which would actually technically be in this kind of non-petroleum based products category over here, is MEK, which is methyl ethyl ketone. Um, which is a solvent. It's the same same family as acetone, but it's a little bit slower drying. It's good for thinning ink, epoxies, and adhesives. It's it's similar enough to acetone to where I haven't really found a use for it. I've never worked with it. So the next one on the list is mineral spirits. I have odorless mineral spirits here. So this is also known as white spirits or paint thinner. Um, 
some interesting history. The, the term paint thinner came about because way back in the good old days, all they had was oil-based paint, so all they had was one thinner for it, so paint thinner. Uh, now some, some people might get really technical and talk about the differences between mineral oil and paint thinner. Paint thinner is usually a few dollars less expensive than mineral spirits. Um, but from what I understand, mineral spirits is uh, slightly more strict or more refined um, than, than paint thinner. Although the difference is pretty much negligible, they're pretty substitutable or interchangeable. So mineral spirits is pretty much going to be your go-to for thinning uh, petroleum-based products or oil-based products, uh, paint stains, uh, varnishes, finishes. It's a good cleaner degreaser good brush cleaner if you were just using an oil based product. Something else you can do, I mix 80% uh, mineral spirits to 20% light oil and that's a really good uh, cutting or drilling fluid. Mineral spirits has kind of a moderate evaporation rate. To make odorless mineral spirits what they do is they remove xylene and toluene which I don't have but it's also something you can buy on the same shelves with all the rest of them. Those are the two strong smelling chemicals. They also have some properties that you might find useful, but that is what they remove from mineral spirits to make it odorless. From what I understand, uh, your standard mineral spirits is slightly stronger than the odorless, but it's not really an issue for anything that I'm aware of. Next on the list, I have uh, naphtha. The VM and P is uh, varnish makers and paint. Uh, I don't really know what the difference is, but uh, Naphtha is a little bit stronger and faster evaporating than uh, mineral spirits. It's also drier, less oily, so this is actually a little bit better for cleaning up uh, greasy and waxy surfaces. This is an excellent cleaner and degreaser. If you're, if you're trying to remove wax, uh, naphtha is what you're going to want to use for that. Uh, also, you know, thins oil-based products, uh, same as mineral spirits just slightly different properties to it. Um, like I said, it's faster evaporating than, uh, than the mineral spirits. So as far as evaporation rates, I probably should have addressed this earlier. That's one of the major, one of the primary reasons that there's all these different uh, options for petroleum-based products. There are some other characteristics, but so depending on the environmental conditions, uh, you know, temperature and viscosity of what you're working with, how fast your stuff is drying, you might want different evaporation rates. The reason you might not want something that evaporates super fast is if you're working with a brush, you're a lot more prone to have brush strokes uh, left on your material if, the, if it dries before it can, can thin itself out. And the reason you might not want something to dry super slow other than patience is the fact that, yeah, it might thin itself out really well, but you're a lot more prone to pick up dust and dirt and debris in the air and stuff. So. Finding that balance and, and kind of uh, trying to work with whatever environment you're, you're applying your finish in, that's where some of the evaporation rate stuff comes into play. But yeah, the uh, naphtha is faster evaporating than mineral spirits. The next one on the list I don't actually have here is uh, toluene, which is also a solvent and thinner. Uh, like I said earlier, it's, uh, along with xylene, it's one of the, the chemicals removed from uh, mineral spirits. Uh, to make it odorless, but uh, both toluene and xylene are pretty toxic stuff, so work smart, wear gloves, so forth. Toluene uh, thins oil-based paints, lacquers, and varnish. Uh, excellent cleaning solvent, faster evaporating than naphtha, mineral spirits, and xylene. So of the bunch, it is the fastest evaporating, which is something that might come in handy if you're working in a really cold environment to help speed things up. So xylene is very similar to toluene. It is faster evaporating than naphtha and mineral spirits, but slower than toluene. This is actually the primary ingredient that they use in like goof off and oops. Um, it's good for removing paint spatter without damaging the surface that it's on. However, I have been informed that uh, you shouldn't use it over a water-based finish. Uh, I haven't tried it, but I've been told that you shouldn't. So this is my go-to remover for uh, adhesives and sticker funk. So the last one on the list is turpentine. Um, this is kind of taking a back seat to mineral spirits as the primary uh, <clears throat> oil-based thinner solvent. 
isn't used near as much as it used to be. Um, I actually, I, I'm a rarity because I use this more than mineral spirits. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of thinning with it. What I do use it for is uh, cleaning the resin and pitch and stuff off of my blades and cutting edges. Uh, partially because I actually don't mind the smell of it. I kind of like it. I know that's weird. Um, and also I figure if it's made from uh, if it's made from resin, then it's uh, probably the best thing for dissolving resin. So that's what I use it for, uh, is cleaning, like I said, cleaning my blades and cutting edges and, and that sort of thing. Um, like I said, if you found this useful, check out my little reference guide on zhfabrications.com. So here's, a, here's that reference guide I made. I have the uh, picture of the chemical, whether it's a solvent, thinner primarily, description, and and the uses and kind of what I use them for. So something else I'm really excited about, I'm going to be hosting a podcast along with Johnny Brook from Crafted Workshop and James Wright from Wood by Wright. Uh, the, first, the first podcast is going to be this coming Thursday, which is o Thursday, October 20th. It's going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, if you guys want, we're going to actually live stream it. So if you go to craftedpodcast.com, you'll be able to ask questions and comments in real time while we're recording the podcast. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hopefully you got something out of this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and uh, comment. I'd love to hear your feedback. And thanks again.